Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Hutchison, and in this video, I'll be introducing a new series that I'll be releasing over the next several months about the connections between our brain and our heart and our heart and our brain. And so many people may have thought at one time, wow, you know, I really feel like my brain is taken over and I'm not following what my heart desires, or people always have sought throughout time to find balance between the brain and the heart. As I've really delved into some of these more difficult neurologic conditions within being a chiropractic physician here in Florida, I've started to realize that what I'm doing primarily is optimizing both the neurologic circuitry between the brain and the heart and the heart back to the brain and also alleviating any structural compression or structural pressure that could be put on the blood flow from the heart to the brain and the brain back to the heart. We had a gentleman just about a month ago that we checked in his common carotid artery on the right had a peak systolic velocity of approximately 150 and only in a pediatric population would it ever be warranted to be that high. We put him through a different fitting of spinal weights and were able to pull C6 into a more upright position instead of being crashed forward, rechecked, and the peak systolic velocity was down to 110, and it still maintained normal in all the other areas. So this was really interesting because we were improving the structure of the spine and we were getting a positive benefit on the blood flow in this individual, which is going to reduce the amount of force and pressure that the heart has to pump to get blood into the brain through the carotid artery. We also check the vertebral arteries below C1, above C1, and see the velocities there. We can check it in different positions if a certain position is exacerbating or bringing about symptoms in an individual. In order to get an idea of the nerve function from the brain to the heart and the heart back to the brain, we have some simple tests like heart rate variability. We also can do even more detailed tests to assess the nervous system function. But ultimately, one of the goals is to bring synergy or kind of like a concerted effort between all of the connections from the mid thoracic spine and all the way up to the head to make sure that we're allowing those nerve impulses to function correctly without interference and freeing up those highways for blood to not be getting structurally impinged. Really interesting is that nerves can actually be altered due to many different reasons, which I'll get into in detail as we go through the series. But one thing I wanna just introduce here is acetylcholine, which is one of the primary neurotransmitters that the vagus nerve releases, can actually become out of balance when the vagus nerve is trying really hard to provide a relaxation effect, and we could have a chronic stress that's causing sympathetic hyperactivity somewhere else. So the vagus nerve will keep releasing acetylcholine in order to try to bring a parasympathetic balance, but eventually the acetylcholine and the acetylcholine receptors outweigh the amount of the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine, acetylcholine esterase, and this can lead to muscle fatigue, weakness, changes in cognition and memory and brain function, and a whole host of other complications for the system. One way to help reset this, besides improving the spinal curvature, reducing any kind of misalignment and or instability, is by stimulating tendons with dry needling. There is some research that's come out on PubMed that shows that using a trigger point dry needling has actually down-regulated acetylcholine and up-regulated acetylcholine esterase. So this is just one example of how the nervous system can also be irritated through more neuromuscular junctions and how functional dry needling, if done correctly, can really help reset the nervous system. And there are tons of connections between the nervous system and the blood flow. So if we can improve the nervous system, we can also help improve the blood flow and vice versa by taking structural pressure off of the body. We can also just help the blood flow have a much easier time getting from the heart to the head in the head back to the heart. Thank you for watching this introduction and I look forward to really deep diving into all the ways that we at our office work to optimize the connections between the brain and the heart and the heart and the brain to help you live a full vibrant life and very often help people get out of some very, very tough and difficult symptoms that they've been dealing with. Thank you so much and we look forward to staying connected.